Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. Today we're going to continue looking at the senior prom, and we're going to learn how to create a resurrection disc from a protected game. So let's get started. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to create a resurrection disc using the senior prom. And to do this, I'm going to use an old game that I actually created from the arcade machine. So this was a program put out by Brotherman Software and it lets you create your own arcade games. And I created a game called Torpedo and the arcade machine will let you write this to a floppy disk and it would actually protect the disk so it was copy protected. Which was great because then it made you feel like you were creating a real game, but the problem is you yourself couldn't actually copy the game. You could always make more copies from your original arcade machine disc, but unfortunately over the years I've lost my original files and all I have is my torpedo game that I created. So I have no way to easily copy this. So we're going to go ahead and use the resurrection feature of the senior prom and see how to do that. So the first thing we want to do, we'll put the disc in and we'll reboot the computer with the senior prom activated. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to hit C to clear all of the memory in the lower 48K. And what this will do is this will fill the memory with a test pattern, which is equal to the page number. So for example, page 1F will get filled with all 1Fs, page 20 will get filled with all 20s. And this is really helpful when you want to go and figure out where does the program live in memory after it gets loaded. So we'll hit C, and this will reboot then. Okay, so there's the game, and it's loaded in. So now what we can do is we can actually hit the non-maskable interrupt button and then reactivate the senior prom. So again, I will hit the NMI, I'll turn on the senior prom and then let go of the red NMI button. So now the senior prom is activated and it's in wait mode. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is actually take out my game itself so there's no risk of damaging it. And I'm gonna put in a blank floppy and now that we've activated the senior prom, the very first thing that we always do is we hit 5 to copy all the main memory to auxiliary memory. And it prints a little S there in the corner indicating that it was successful. And then just to verify, we want to find out which graphics or text page we want to start when we create the resurrection disk. So I'm pretty sure that we want graphics and we want high res and that's where we want to start. So we just remember that. The last thing we need to do to get started is to boot the Senior Prom Utilities disk. And I've got that mounted on the UniS disk over there on top of the main disk drive. I'm going to go ahead and reboot the computer and to do that I'm going to hit Escape which will do a boot. And as I'm doing that I'm going to deactivate the Senior Prom and go back to the regular ROMs because the Senior Prom Utilities Disk won't boot properly if the Senior Prom is active. So I'm going to hit Escape and then deactivate the Senior Prom and it should now boot up the Utilities Disk and I'm going to go ahead and click on 1 which will write out all 64K of auxiliary memory to the disk so we can create a 48K Resurrect Disk. So I hit number 1 it's going to create three files split up according to the memory and we're going to go ahead and we'll hit a key to begin and we're going to save to disk drive number one and before I do that I'm going to go over on my Mac and make sure I enable the real five and a quarter inch drive on the UniS disk. So it's drive number one and you can see now it's actually initializing the disk. So one thing to keep in mind when creating a resurrection disk, all you're doing is saving a memory snapshot of whatever was in memory at the time. So this will only work for games that don't do any disk access during the game. 
So for example, something like Castle Wolfenstein or Load Runner won't work because those are always loading in new levels from the disc. But for a lot of games, things like Choplifter or assuming that this works, my game, the entire game was actually loaded in memory all at once and it never needed to do any disc access afterward. So if that's the case, then this should work. Another point to keep in mind is this isn't actually unprotecting the disc. All it's doing is just saving memory. So this isn't really a way of cracking the disc. Okay, so now everything has been saved, all the memory, and we can probably just do a catalog to see what's there. And sure enough, there's three files. The first one contains most of the memory, and then there's two more files which contain the remainder of the memory. And we're actually going to use this and create just a 48K resurrection disk. So we won't even need this third file because we're just going to assume that it doesn't use that upper 16K of memory. So to start, we're going to re-enable the UniS disk and we'll reboot that to get the utilities program back up. And once this is back up, then we can go ahead and actually create a self-booting resurrect disk. So... We'll go ahead and hit 3 to do that. We're going to create a 48K Resurrect Disk. And we want to view high res when the game starts again. Page 1. We want full graphics. And it's going to go ahead and load that. Okay, and it says go ahead and insert the disk with the memory files. So we'll re-enable our 5 and a quarter inch and hit the space bar and you can see it's actually now saving a file called resurrect and this will actually get run when the disk is booted. This file just when it's booted up it deloads the three memory files, moves them to the appropriate places in memory, then it reloads all the registers for their original values, turns on the correct viewing page, text, graphics, etc. and then issues a return from interrupt which brings the program back to life exactly where it was. So I've got the real five and a quarter inch enabled. I have the senior prom disabled, so we should be good to go. So if I just control open Apple reset, it's gonna boot up our disk and this should load all of the memory that was in the Apple's computer at the time. And you can see it's coming in slowly. And there's the game, and if we're lucky, we can hit the space bar and go ahead and we can play our game. Whoops. And clearly, I'm not very good at my own game. Oh, I'm terrible. So you can see that this is actually a really easy way to save a copy of a write-protected disk where the entire game resides in memory all at once. Uh, it doesn't crack the game, and it doesn't give you much information about what the game is doing under the covers, but it's a quick way to actually save off the disc. So that's about all I want to show this time for the Senior Prom. And there's a lot more features of it which we can delve into in another episode. For example, there's a complete sector editor. There's a lot more features in terms of moving memory around. There's different features for altering memory. So for example, if you wanted to look at some memory, change it to see how a game works. But I think we'll leave all that for a future episode. One last thing, I'd like to give a shout out to my Patreon backers, Mark, Ken, Adam, and Olivier. You guys are what make these videos possible. If you'd like to become a Patreon backer, just find the link in the show notes. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.